Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a triple unboxing video and it's going to be uh, one of the last remaining hauls of the year for me. I still have a couple more coming uh, and then once those are done, I'm really going to try to refrain from buying any more fragrances this year and just enjoying what I own. That's my plan anyways. Uh, we'll see how well I can stick to that. So first of all, I want to give a special shout out to um, to Glitch, who sent me some samples here. So we're going to unbox these. I'm going to show you what he sent me. So I've got some extra samples to discuss. And then I've got some outrageous full bottles to show you guys. Uh, and uh, all right. Also, tonight, which I'm sure this video is only going to drop like an hour before the uh, live stream, but we are doing a live stream with John Beeble from uh, January Scent Project, and he actually sent me some extra samples. So, um, because of that, wow, very well, very well shipped indeed. All right, let's see, look at this, look at this stuff. Um, I don't think I've ever seen stuffing like that before, outside of like in a stuffed animal. Well done, Glitch. Well done indeed. All right, let's see what these are. So first we have uh, Kajal Jory. I'm not familiar with this one. Do you guys know Jory? Kajal Jory. Interesting. Um... I've got a little bit of a cold, but uh, it smells like something I think I've smelled before. I just can't put my finger on it. Uh, Kajal Jory. J-O-O-R-I-E. 2019 release. Uh, ginger, clove, nutmeg, pepper, bergamot, lemon, orange blossom, rose, ylang ylang, honey, musk, vanilla, sandalwood, tonka bean, cedar, oud, and patchouli. I feel like I've smelled something like this before, but it is uh, not coming to me right now. Uh, maybe it's just that floral heart that smells somewhat familiar. All right, that'll be a cool one to di di dip into. I've actually never, uh, I have never uh, done a video on Kajal yet. So it's one of those house, one of those houses that just never really came up on my radar. Oh, nice. Um... Just reading a little note that uh, Glitch wrote me. Thank you, mate. Seriously, it's very kind of you. And then we've got an Initio Rehab. This is the uh, second rehab sample that's landed in my lap in the last, like, two weeks or something. So I think people are trying to tell me something. I'm usually pretty harsh on, on the house of Initio, though. So if I do a review, it may not be pretty. But uh, I will I will review Rehab one day. Uh, let me just put Jory on the list of decants that I have, or else I'll forget all about it. Okay. All right, and then we've got this, which is all right. Here we go. So first, we have. Ah, very well packaged. Uh, let's see. Can I get in there? So, this right here, Every Storm, A Serenade. I have a video on the channel already, believe it or not. Uh, it's the only, or one of the only, um, imaginary author fragrances that I have done a video on so far. And I liked it, but I didn't really love it. Uh, ooh, A City on Fire. So this one I was really looking forward to doing a video on. I think I have maybe, you know, half a mil or something in a sample somewhere. So this will help me get to know it a little bit. Uh, and then also The Cobra and the Canary. Ah, this is one that's actually been on the, uh, on, the, on the wish list. It's one that I don't have a sample of. So let me just mark that down or else I'll forget all about it. The Cobra and the Canary, 2012 release, leathery and smoky. Ah, it sounds like my kind of fragrance, though. Leather, tobacco, flower, hay, iris, lemon, and asphalt. Interesting. Uh, interesting note listing, I'll tell you that. 
A City on Fire, Cade Juniper, Berries, Cardamom, Labdanum, and Spike Nard. Yeah, I think I've got a, de a small decant of that floating around somewhere. Uh, the New Company Forced Lungs. You guys heard about that one? That is uh, news to me. I've never heard of that at all. Forced Lungs. 2020 release. Woody Residus. I don't think I've smelled anything from the new company. Uh, Siberian Stone Pine, Atlas Cedar, Cambodian Benzoin, Haitian Vetiver, Indonesian Patchouli, and Italian Bergamot. Excellent. Nice little note listing. Mona di Oreo, Santal Nabatea. I have a uh, sample of this. Someone, uh, I think it was Armando, sent me a quick little discovery atomizer. Uh, very cool. That's a really good... Uh, I will tell you that the Mona di Oreo Santal Nabatea is a really good sandalwood no one talks about. Uh, Chapel Factory Baptisma, Baptisma, so Baptisma, I think, might have been on my wish list, Chapel Factory Baptisma 2020 release, bergamot, vervain, ginger, milk, neroli, jasmine, white musk, frankincense, and moss, um, this was not the one, but the Chapel Factory does have one that's called Holy Stick that is actually on my to-sniff list that I have not come across yet. Um, Holy Stick, I know, uh, I know that um, one, of the one of the folks that I follow, uh, Fragrance Journey, he mentioned how much he loves uh, Holy Stick, so I will... I'll, I'll keep an eye for, out for that one, but that's a house I've been wanting to get into, so Baptismo will be a good way to do it. And Nasomato Absinthe. Ah, this is one that has been on my to-sniff list. Excellent. So Absinthe is um, one of the Nasomatos that I have never smelled before, and I hear mixed reviews on it. I hear some people saying they love it. I hear some people saying they hate it. came out in 2007, actually, so it's been a while. Um, green, spicy, woody, earthy, and sweet. Uh, they don't list notes with those nasomatos. And then we've got Hermit Coat, ah, another chapel factory. Maybe Holy Stick is in here. Maybe we just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, that is Hermit Coat. Interesting names. I wonder what that house is all about. I gotta do some digging on the house of chapel factory. <laughs> Uh, ash, Elemi Resin, Fir Balsam, Heliotrope, Ambroxan Balsams, Frankincense, Rose, Amber Frankincense, Musk, and Smoke. Sounds like my kind of fragrance. I love smoky frankincense scents, so... Ah, uh, there's actually one more um, imaginary author's hidden in the back. Slow Explosions. Do you guys know that one? That is one that... Uh, I remember hearing Josh Meyer talk about. Slow Explosions explosions explosion ah there we go 2016 fruity and spicy apple leather benzoin cashmere and saffron and rose interesting yeah i think i've got a small little decant floating around too so that'll be uh that'll help me get to it okay next is uh regime de fleurs rock river melody i've never heard of that at all rock river rock river Melody, there it is, 2021 release. I've never even heard of this brand. Cedar, Amber, Bergamot, Galvanum, Ivy, Musk, Narcissus, Patchouli, Plant Juice, Rose, and Sandalwood. I've never heard of Regime de Fleurs. The French label, Regime de Fleurs, shows that there are other sources of inspiration than flowers and fruits when creating new fragrances. Behind the brand is filmmaker and young artist Elia Raza who highly appreciates nature, history, and visual arts. Together with Ezra Woods, she launched Regime de Fleurs in 2014 as an art project that aimed to draw inspiration from different arts that freshen the perspective on luxury fragrances and scented candles. Interesting. Huh. Never heard of this house before. Uh, and then we, ah, Slumber House, Back, Backy, Backy, uh, I remember um, Brandon from Therapeutic Fragrances talking about 
this fragrance. It came out in 2012. It's a slumber house. Um, and Josh Loeb, of course, is the perfumer, just like all the slumber houses. Honey, tobacco, apricot, straw, vanilla, Devana, amber, and parchment paper. Interesting note listing. So they re-released this in 2017, it looks like. Um, but I, I've never smelled either. I have no clue which one this is. Probably the 2017 one is my guess, but uh, I, I don't know. Either way, it's it's just precious juice, so I'm very lucky to have it. I can do a video on it. And then we've got DS and Durga Cowboy Grass. Okay, so DS and Durga is kind of a um, a divisive house as well. I, I came across one that I absolutely loved from DS and Durga, and it was um, Spirit of the Glen. What a fragrance that is for a boozy fragrance lover, man. I um, I would love to find a bottle of that one day, but apparently it's discontinued and hard to find. Um, Cowboy Grass is still available for purchase. It's Wild Thyme, Rosewood, Bergamot. I just did a Rosewood video the other day. I could have made it. Sagebrush, Basil, Rose, Otto, Vetiver, Grass, and Ambergris. Interesting. Uh, and then we have another slumber house, Norn Parfum Extra. Ah, excellent. Norn is, uh, I think, the, one of the ones that they are very well known for. Um, how do I tell? It was like a re-release. There was two Norns. Um, I don't know which one this is. Again, same same problem with the some, with these re-releases. I wish they would change the name or or something like that. Um, I'm going to assume it was the one that came out in 2021, but uh, I have no way of knowing. Norn is an insane looking note breakdown. Uh, Mysore sandalwood, pine needle, frankincense, hemlock, and it just goes on and on and on. Bunch of stuff in here. Violet leaf, rosemary, tree, moss, patchouli, lavender, cypress, lichen, oak moss, just a million things. Looks great. Ah, Lucky Oud. This is one of the Bortnikovs I've never smelled. So, fun stuff. Lucky Oud. Has been on the list for a while. Uh, Lucky Oud. 2020 release. Resinous, spicy, Indian sandalwood, Thai lotus, tea rose, vanilla, coke, cacao, cacao absolute. Bengali sandalwood, styrax, Thai oud, and tonka bean. Very cool. And then we've got X Idolo Rider. Never heard of this. Uh, although I think I have heard of this brand. I've, I don't know anything about them, and I've never sniffed them before. Um, X Idolo Rider from 2015. Resinous, amber, resins, woody notes, Omani frankincense, tobacco, and jasmine. Sounds sounds good. Resinous, spiky, spicy, and tobacco-y and woody. Sounds like my kind of fragrance. Ah, the final, the final decant, and it is holy stick. How's that? It was meant to be, baby. Um... Holy stick, I can I can take it off the wish list and I can put it officially on the decant list. All right. Great times. Um, let me just put these away because otherwise I will lose them. There is absolutely no doubt about that. And um, what are you? What are you? Okay, so we're going to put the imaginary authors with the imaginary author fragrances, and we are going to put the Lucky Scent fragrances with the Lucky Scent. These are Look at all these samples from Lucky Scent I still have to talk about with you guys. The list goes on, ladies and gentlemen. The beat goes on. Da da dum da dum da da. This bag's gonna run out of room pretty soon. It means I gotta start talking about these. I just hate these damn Lucky Scent vials. There's good and there's bad about them. So the good is that they seal up really tight. Juice never leaks out of these things. You, I mean, for decades, I feel like they could just sit in there and they would be good. Um, the bad news is, is there's no atomizer. And uh, you actually, you know, have to dab it on your skin. Okay, I have to take one out. One too many for this to close up. 
So DS and Durga, Cowboy Grass, you dealt the short straw. You get to live out here with other other decants. The rest of you can go into the into the fragrance vault. Okay. So one down, one unboxing to go. Well, actually two, because I'm gonna go ahead and open John Beeble's package as well. So I can have it ready for our January scent project video tonight. And um, he sent me a couple things he said. Sending you a small package with a few extras. Excellent. Beautiful. Beautiful note. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, Ah, uh, okay. Well, I'm just gonna set these aside because I, they're samples. Um, well, let me just take a look. Curiosity killed the cat. I must know. I must know what he sent me. Ah, uh, these are kind of cool. January scent. Red cedar oil natural, very cool. Um, wow, and then we've got uh Texas cedar. Ah, very, very cool. This is like when Russian Adam sent me, um, sent me the ingredient, the ingredient package. I love stuff like that, that's awesome. Blessed, I feel very blessed as I just make a mess of this nice little packaging that it came in, you know. I'm just hopeless. Um, let's see. These are kind of cool. Black Walnut is one of them. A limited edition fragrance by John Beeble in collaboration with American Perfumer for 2022. Cool. Look at that. I guess there's the artwork that's supposed to smell like the uh, fragrance. I can't say I have very many walnut fragrances, to be honest with you. That's kind of a cool deal to do a walnut fragrance. I wonder if anyone's ever done a sunflower seed fragrance. I do love sunflower seeds. Um, the other one is called Atupe. I'm guessing it's pronounced Atupe. Probably my Texas tongue is uh, letting me down, but here is Atupe. Um, yeah, I wish I didn't have this cold so I can actually smell stuff tonight when we're talking. Um, bergamot, black lotus flower, lavender absolute, Siberian pine, carrot seed, eugenol from clove, black currant, blonde tobacco, sandalwood, vanilla, cypriol, labdanum, and dark patchouli, antique essential oil aged a hundred years. Wow. That's the bergamot used and the eugenol from clove. Antique Accord, age 70 years, black lotus flower. Wow, that's kind of cool. I like stuff like that. Uh, this is Soar... Ah, here's the one that's black walnut. There's black walnut. And uh, finally, we have Sorabaji. Sor Sorabaji. It's like he's testing my tongue. Can I say the word? Sorabaji. Um, there's no card with that one, but I'll have to look that up here. Very cool. All right, good stuff. Now that I've completely made a mess of, uh, of this little area, let me... Bring out the big guns, because I actually know what's in this one, and it is, uh... Oh, wait a minute. There was more from Glitch. Apologies, Glitch. I cut you short there. At least I think this is from Glitch. Ah, 
It is. Well, uh, this is from... Who is this from? Where'd this come from? Am I losing my mind? Um, I'm guessing this did come from, from Glitch. So he sent me, I think, some blind sniffs. Are these blind sniffs, Glitch? Do I need to refer to the sheet? I think I need to refer to the sheet. We could do a blind sniffing episode on these. Um, very cool. Everyone loves a good blind sniff. So yes, maybe I'll avoid looking at the sheet and, um, you know, make it make it a blind sniff. Fun times. Uh, let's see, where do you guys want to live? I'm running out of room. You guys can live right here. And you can live right here. Okay. Thanks, Glitch. Thank you, sir. I almost forgot about those. They almost went in the trash. Now let's get to the full bottles. Everyone's been waiting for. These are outrageous, too, by the way. I just want to spray and wear these right now. Like, I just want to scrub off what I'm wearing, which, by the way, my sense of the day is a good one. But it's not going to be able to compete with what's in there. My sense of the day is this. Jacques Bogat witness showing the box yesterday on my birthday stream made me want to wear this and boy I was not let down I'll tell you that this is great great juice it's so green and piney and yet it has this cinnamon that reminds of Balenciaga Poron but it also has this animalic touch to it this um you know 80s vintage would not be one bit surprised if that fell right into the 80s. It was actually um, a 90s fragrance, though. Witness came out in 1992. But it's one of those early 90s fragrances that feels like a 80s fragrance, if that makes sense. But it has this um, cinnamon patchouli. Dominique uh, Preces created that. And it just has this... Man, there's something about it that uh, just has this... Um, you know, this animalic touch that I really like. And it's not listed. There's no animalic note listed. But man, it's good. Um, really good stuff. Okay. Let us open this. This is... Oh, no. Whenever I shook that, we had a tragedy. These January scent project files are pretty thin. Okay. Stay. Don't fall again. <laughs> it looks like it wants to fall. I feel like I should move these. All right, you're going to go over here. Okay. Let's get back to it. Everyone's favorite in unboxing. Not just any unboxing. This is going to be a hell of an unboxing. This is thanks to Armando, by the way. Just in case... Uh, just in case there was any doubt as to who I could get such uh, classic all-time fragrances from. So we'll, we'll start with kind of the um, maybe more common, less exciting, but it's going to get exciting real quick. So this is Carner D600. This is the vintage version. And D600 is a fragrance that apparently... Carner Barcelona's take on Dior Ohm. So I actually really like Carner Queers. And I will do a... Ooh, that smells really good from the atomizer. Damn. Mmm, and I am a Dior Ohm fan, I must admit. So, Carner D600. And uh, this is going to get talked about on the channel. There's no doubt about that. Let me make some room. Let me put these over here. All right. So D600, like I said, it's basically um, Carner's take on Dior Homme. Uh, it came out in 2011. And Christophe Reynaud is the perfumer. Spicy, powdery, Sicilian bergamot, Madagascan pepper, 
grapefruit, Guatemalan cardamom, Egyptian jasmine absolute, Italian iris, vetiver, Virginia cedar, and bourbon vanilla absolute. I'll tell you what, this house is legit. I did a, I did a video on a fragrance called Sandor 70s, I think it was, I think it was called, if I'm not mistaken. That's a really good fragrance, and um, I hear great things about this from Armando, and I um, uh, really like Queers. Rich Mitch, excuse me, sent me a sample, um, and so I will do a video on that sample soon. I don't have a bottle of Carter Queers, but it's uh, it, it does seem like it's full bottle worthy to me. Okay, so that takes care of the first one. The next one... Might as well get to cutting now. Ah. Uh, okay. Let's continue cutting, shall we? Ah. Uh, this is one of the good ones. This is one of the all time greats that I've been hunting for unsuccessfully for years, by the way. My mate, Rich Mitch, found a bottle um, maybe a year ago, and I was so over the moon for him because this is a tough one to find. And I was like, one day, sure enough, it will be in my collection. I will find this damn thing. And sure enough, I did. This is Tom Ford's Amber Absolute. Ah, it just feels good saying that. It feels good holding this. I've missed you why I can't miss you, but I feel like I shouldn't miss you. I Like, I know you from a past life. Oh. Mmm. Amber Absolute. Welcome home, my friend. Welcome home. Um, so, Amber Absolute is uh, obviously one of the all-star Ambers. Uh, many consider it to be one of the greatest ambers ever created. It was discontinued, of course. Uh, they always discontinue the good ones. And this is frankincense, amber, woody notes, labdanum, and vanilla. I have a feeling that this may compete with Ombre Sultan for the top spot. I know it sounds crazy, but this is my favorite amber. Um, and it's hard to blame me. This is a great amber, but it's a little bit more spicy. I think this is a little bit more resinous. And actually smelling it from the atomizer, um, I get little, I do get a little hint of that tobacco oud um, that, you know, I Rich Mitch made the connection between tobacco oud, but actually what came to my mind first thing from smelling that atomizer is not tobacco oud, but Sahara Noir which is also on my Tom Ford wish list. And that was also a very big labdanum perfume, Sahara Noir from 2013. It's a decade old. Um, I want a bottle of that so bad. Uh, I have a decant. I did a video on Sahara Noir, I believe. I believe I did a video on it. It's great. One of the best labdanum heavy fragrances that's not in my collection. That papyrusy frankincense it opens up very green with that cypress and calamus, if memory serves. Oh, fuck. It's amazing. Um, so, Sahara Noir, still on the wish list. Amber Absolute, checked off of the wish list. Oh, I just want to wear that. Okay, next on the list. Things are about to get real very quickly. Things are about to get real. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Come to Papa. This is... A uh, vintage bottle of Naomi Goodsir's Or de Sorail. Or de Sorail? I'm going to assume that's how you pronounce that. Probably not. Oh, it's Bertrand Duchefort. I mean, hell, you can't... You, I don't think you can go wrong with the Bertrand Duchefort, honestly. I don't think there's a single Bertrand Duchefort I've ever smelled that's bad. Um, and... So this is, uh, Armando says that Or de Sorel is um, Bertrand Duchefort's take on the Tobacco Vini DNA. But he made this in 2014, years after Tobacco Vini came out in 2007. So uh, this is red fruits, rum, mango, 
Orange, Cystus, and Divana. You know there's going to be Divana in here if it's a Bertrand du Chaffour. Beeswax, Absolute, Coconut, Clary Sage, Geranium, and Ylang Ylang in the heart. With Tobacco, Absolute, Vanilla, Absolute, Amber, Cedarwood, Mate, Absolute, Oakwood, Absolute, Labdanum, and Musk. Fruity, sweet, tobacco-y, vanilla-y. Um, can't wait to get to know that. Okay. Thank you, Armando, by the way. The the Carner D600 and the Orde de Sorel were freebies. So, thank you. Thank you, my friend. And the uh, two stars of the show, I'm going to save... Um, I am going to save... Two of the main stars of the show for last. But this is actually one of the damn stars of the show as far as I'm concerned. And it is a vintage bottle of a Roja. Yes, we are getting into vintage Rojas already. All hell is about to break loose. Um, but this is a vintage Roja bottle from Oman. So you can tell it's the vintage Roja because of the cap and the plaque. Um, the new Rojas come in the standardized... Uh, you know, they've changed the packaging up. It doesn't have the colorful cap. The original Middle Eastern line had this colorful looking cap. And, um, oh, this is Oman. And I'll tell you what, uh, I think this might be, uh, one of the best frankincense for, you know, uh, perfumes that I didn't have in my collection in full bottle form. I have a decant of this, and I actually have a decant, or a Discovery Atomizer, excuse me, an officially branded Discovery Atomizer, and the officially branded Discovery Atomizer is of the newer variety of, not, not the original vintage bottle, but of the newer variety, so I'm going to do a comparison video one day for you guys. I think that'll make a hell of a video. No one does that kind of content on YouTube. Nobody. Um... So that'll be a great video, and I am, again, over the moon to have this. You can kind of pick it up by the cap. Uh, and the older Rojas also say Roja in block letters right there. They didn't have his signature on the front. That's another way to kind of tell. Um, anyways, good stuff. I do love this. I'm not going to lie. Uh, very, very happy to have it. Okay, now the final two. And they are vintage amouage. They are non-magnetic cap amouages. Very hard to find. Um, and just for you guys' reference, uh, I believe this is the very original 2012 version of this fragrance. Let me just hold it and look at it. Oh, yes. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. Uh, so this is the original Amouage interlude. Look how little he used. Uh, did I need this? No. I already have the Blue Beast right here. But mine is actually the um, snap cap, or the uh, magnetic cap. So now we add... We add its brethren, the vintage original. Mm. So, um, I don't know if you can see, but there is the batch code. There's no box because this was a tester, but it did come with a cap, which is kind of cool. Um, This cap is heavy too. Uh, it feels like the caps from from the old Amouage. Um, yeah, this this uh, cap right here, the the actual snap cap, is much heavier than the magnetic cap. Interestingly enough, it's been a while since I've held one of these. I guess. All right, I love it. Um, what a find, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, interlude. So you can see, mine actually says it on the collar. Right there. And this one, 
says it on the cap itself. Very cool. Good stuff. Uh, can't wait. What a hell of a comparison video I could do. I could do the original... Um, I could do the original interlude versus the magnetic cap interlude uh, versus the interlude black iris, which is right back behind silver crystal, and uh, versus interlude 53, a quadruple comparison video. Wow. Um, I've got my work cut out for me. I need to get my nose back to 100% from this cold. Man, that's good stuff, though. I am stoked to have that. And the one that I may be most stoked to have, the one that I may put right dead smack in the middle behind my head, um, this is one I've been looking for for ages, decades. Well, decades is not true, but it feels like I've been looking for it for decades. Uh, this is the... Uh, can you see it? Do you know what this is? Oh. So this is the original Jubilation 25 for men, Bertrand Duchafour. Um, mm. Oh, man. I would much rather have this. I would much, much rather have this rather than, um, rather than, uh, the new Jubilation 40 X-Ray that they're coming out with. My opinion. I've never even smelled that, and I'd rather have this. Uh, that's just the way I, that's just the way it goes for me. Um, but yes, the Nod Magnetic Cap Jubilation 25, very excited, very stoked, very lucky. You know, you're not going to find these type of fragrances without making friends in the community. You know, if you're into older fragrances, um, it's, it's, you know, obviously it helps having a channel and, you know, um, learning from everybody, from you guys. Um, but I have to give a special shout out to Armando for being very fair. Armando the Fair is his official name. Uh, obviously, this was not a cheap haul for me, but uh, I think he was very, very fair. And um, so, yes, a lot of amazing fragrances for me to wear. Uh, and now you see one of the reasons why I'm saying my hauls are probably going to stop. I do have some more coming, though. I've got a couple more coming, uh, and then I think we're going to put the brakes on for this year, and I'm going to try to enjoy what I have, because I've got, it's almost overwhelming how much, you know, you have to, like, prioritize what you have, you have to prioritize your favorites, or else you get caught wearing just all this stuff, um, so, yes, um, let me know what your favorites are from the hall, special shout out to, uh, John Beeble for the January Scent Project. Uh, samples that I've never smelled. These will make for great videos one day. Um, and special shout out to Glitch for all of the samples earlier and the uh, blind sniff setup. That's awesome. Can't wait to get to play with that. Um, that'll make a great video as well. So I appreciate everyone watching. Uh, do tune into the live stream tonight if you can. I know you're only going to have like an hour uh, head, heads up time by watching this video, but Tonight, 5 o'clock Central, 6 o'clock Eastern, we're doing a live stream with John Beeble. Do try to make it there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and subscribe and uh, all of that stuff that helps the YouTube algorithm. I do really appreciate it. Uh, the fragrance town is growing, and that, that makes me quite happy. So, again, thank you very much, everyone. Cheers, guys, and I'll see you tonight on the live stream. Bye-bye.